I'm the Queen of England, and when I'm not playing with my 400 corgis, defending my family from accusations of racism and pedophilia, or making sacrifices to Baphomet to prolong my life, I listen to the Thick Boys podcast. If you also listen to the podcast, why not leave a like, a rating, or a review on your favorite podcast platform? That way more pet I mean people can find it. Mummy. Uh, oh, mummy. Yes, my dear sweet prince. I say, those rascals at the BBC have a picture of me eating skittles out of a young boy's bum hole. Oh, heavens, not again. Fred not, Billy. Mummy will make it all better. What do you say we go list all the things we hate about Megan's baby? I was, I think what this is, is like, it says on here, it says puff, and it tells me how many times I've hit it. Yeah. And it says 6,616. <laughs> like, I was like, that doesn't make me feel better. Yeah, no. It's like, I think it's for like your atomizer. That way you can be like, oh, it's getting old. I yeah, need to change but, it. No, I know. I'm just. But I don't know how to do that. So all it is is just a constant <laughs> reminder of like. Like, you probably use like, <laughs> Of my fucking vices. <laughs> how much pacify. of a loser you are. <laughs> What if, like, what if, like, when you die, you get, like, that, you know, post a video game thing that shows you, like, how many people you killed. Wasted. How much, yeah. <laughs> Most money you ever held at once. That kind of thing. <laughs> I think, like, it would be very disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> Mine would be bad. I just love the puff counter. And stuff. Just watching like, it, you're like, I knew it was bad, but yeah. didn't know it was this bad. It's like, you thought about boobs. I don't know. 12 years worth of your life and like oh it just oh, says oh, all boy. nines you just you ran the meter up too yeah. high couldn't get <laughs> accurate reading it's just all nines <laughs> <laughs> it's like we chose to do an integer which only goes up to so far but uh I guess we should have used a larger number now. <laughs> it says like 1.09 E <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> E 34 yeah. tiny letters like, I'm oh, like fuck. I don't even know how to read that it's like yeah we don't either it just started going it's like I've had this for like a little over a month and I was like oh fuck <laughs> like, I've been doing this for like five years now. dude I I can remember getting like the metal ones like the the original vapes yeah. you know what I'm talking about like yeah. the self contained ones or yeah. whatever like the original like I'm gonna chuff a ton of clouds and yeah. you have to like you'd hit it then you put juice on it and you hit yeah. it you put juice on it and it was I'd go through a bottle a day, mm. going down the road. Oh, yeah, with, that's like, when everybody was like, like everybody was like, yeah, man, and they were like, oh, you got a drip. And I was like, <laughs> that's what I was is. like, that's not really what I'm here for. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to stop smoking menthol <laughs> cigarettes. Like, so when, like, when, like, the FDA was doing, like, their anti-vape thing, and they released that infographic about how people do vapes or whatever, and they showed, like, a picture of somebody holding a coil and putting the oil on the threads to, like, screw into the base. And it was like... You went through the trouble of making like this graphic. You paid an artist to make this graphic, and you have no fucking idea <laughs> I feel what like, this is. I feel like the government regulations, like they're so stupid and they don't understand. <laughs> like they might as well have just like showed a guy with like shoving it up his ass and hitting yeah. <laughs> coming out of his mouth like a choo choo train. Coming down the, <laughs> the guy's like, <laughs> yeah. Take that big tobacco. I can't stop it. <laughs> Is your child vaping? Check his anus. To find Check out. his asshole to find it out. Uh, the, the truth ones now, because truth switched to like, oh, we're going to stop vaping because we, we yeah. beat cigarettes, but no one didn't do it to me. Yeah. And there's the one where he's like, lead is also metal, and your vape has metal in it. You could be <laughs> inhaling lead and nickel. Yeah. That has like the dinosaur. Yeah. If it was and, made out of lead and nickel, <laughs> yeah. then yes. And then yeah. at the end, you got to watch it. The dude clicks the little thing. Yeah. And I swear to God, he goes, hell, Satan. But nothing is as scary as the facts. Vaping can deliver toxic metals like nickel and lead into your lungs. That's metal. And your lungs. Tail Satan. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what? what? Yeah, dude, if you got one, he's like, it's metal in your lungs, and we got an orchestra to really beef up the music. Oh, Have so you seen that one? They're like, like metal music type of angle. 
No, no, no. They have like an orchestra. Have you seen that commercial no. where it, it, it's like uh-uh. it's like the dude? He was like, "We use CGI to show the metal going in your lungs." It's all fake. I saw one where it was like a big monster. Yeah, and the big monster made yeah. of the metal. It's that same commercial at the very end. The dude claps his thing, and I swear to God, he goes, "Hail Satan!" <laughs> I'm like, like who's what? This? It's a little you bit on the nose, it. isn't it? It gets me every time. I'm like, I feel like Alex Jones. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the government. <laughs> I can't do it. They're turning, they're turning our assholes gay. They're our assholes gay. It's all part of their plan. Yeah. See, the first thing, what they got to do is they got to get rid of the cigarettes first. Once they get rid of the cigarettes, then you start vaping. Once you start vaping, then you're gay. It's all Satan's plan. You start shoving it up your ass. You start sucking in lead. And then one thing leads to another. And the Trump's world going around a goblin's nest. And all leads to... I'm the devil and I don't want you to vape. He does that voice. The devil gets all red. Like, why would the devil not want me? If the devil doesn't want me to vape, then there's precedence to vape. If yeah, not, exactly. If I'm looking yeah, at this right way. Yeah. It's, like, it's like, oh, I should vape more. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, vaping is the Lord's work. <laughs> <laughs> Doing God's work out there, chuffing clouds. Yeah. Outside, rapping cools. outside the fucking Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can, <laughs> You're welcome, Christ. <laughs> I can tell you that when I started vaping, like when I'd stop cigarettes, I, I stopped cigarettes cold turkey. Yeah. And picked up a vape, and then like within two weeks, like I could smell better, I could taste oh, yeah, things absolutely. better. I just like I felt better. I was like, granted, it, it's a habit like any other habit, yeah. and I should probably not do it, you no. know. But at the same time, it's like I know this, how I know how it makes me feel. Yeah, yeah. this is not as anywhere near as bad no. as cigarettes are. No, yeah. I just I like I remember back when I used to work out. Like, <laughs> I have a kid now, so that don't happen. But <laughs> I remember like I would like be on like the elliptical or whatever. Like doing cardio, and I'd just be fucking coughing, and mm-hmm. like shit would be coming out. And like, as soon as I stopped smoking and started vaping, it all went You're away. You're pooping yourself? No. <laughs> shit, like, my pants. Like, I'd be like coughing shit oh. up. Like, you know how I like, you mean, like, like you're dropping like, like little you, nuggets? Like, no, I wasn't like pooping in my pants. Like was, rabbit turkeys. <laughs> like, it's like one centimeter long. <laughs> Like how oh, that smoking guy's been here. <laughs> See all the pellets? Full shorts. <laughs> like little, yeah, little he's going to shake them out. Like, little mice turns everywhere. <laughs> like, fuck, dude. <laughs> you got to quit smoking. <laughs> I, I used to go to the gym in Carrollton, and uh, the one right beside the old Ryan's, the new Chick-fil-A. Mm-hmm. And I'd go there for like an hour and just be on the treadmill for like, I don't know, a mile and a half, two yeah. miles. I went like 280, immediately get in my car and smoke a black and mild and be like, <laughs> I'm so fucking healthy, bro. Like, I'm tripping <laughs> off, like, listening to Drake and like, my 94 Buick Skylark. Like, <laughs> my body's like, in the best shape. So I've never been this never healthy. Been this healthy. <laughs> The doors yeah. are rattling. It's amazing. It's like a Twenty-two volume. It's amazing how how you fool yourself like that. You're like, uh, yeah, I'm in a good place. Yes. <laughs> it's just trying to go into going into class with a Georgia t-shirt and like a tank top and gym shorts, oh, yeah. being like. <laughs> Check me out. Man, I remember, I immediately remember, like, as soon as I got to Auburn, and I was like, I don't have to wear jeans every day. I was like, fuck that. I, I, I stopped wearing jeans. I wore shorts every day. And yeah. in the winter, I wore, I wore sweatpants. Where were you being forced to wear jeans? Like, I thought that that was, like, the normal thing to do. People just wore jeans to, like, to class. Oh. Like. I still I wear jeans more than anything. Yeah, well, I wear them now, too. Yeah. But, like, back then, I was like. I don't have to do that. Like, everybody's walking around in pajamas. I was like, this is fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. I remember <laughs> like, when I first got into college, like, I saw people, like, sleeping outside. And I was like, what is this place? <laughs> I remember the first time I saw uh, someone smoking a cigarette in, like, the little courtyard at yeah. West Georgia. And I was like, I'm an adult. Like, this is what this. it's like to be grown up. Yeah. Like, sitting in the I can smoking section. make my own bad decisions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did y'all ever have, like, the people that would come up there and they'd, like, shout at people? Like in like the little quad area or whatever. Shout out! Like I, the- I remember, it didn't happen too much at Auburn, but I really wasn't like around like that. But at Kennesaw, like they had like this big field out mm-hmm. in front of like where they do all the. Um, uh, it was like this big field, and it was sort of like you had like the different like areas. Like you had like the like math was over here, and science and kinesiology was over here. We had that at West Georgia. Yeah, yeah, you and had the was, math building and like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah, and there's like a building. big field that separates. All yeah, of them. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Love Valley. And so... No, Love was, Valley was on the other side. Uh, yeah, Somebody got raped. Somebody got there. raped in Love Valley, Whoa. so... Yeah. That's not good. Miss Nomer. Series of unfortunate events taught me that, that <laughs> word. 
But we had like these people that came up there, and I can't remember what they were like yelling about. I mean, it might have been like abortion or whatever. And like all these people were just like screaming at each other. Yeah. And I was just like standing there, I was like, oh my God. I was like, <laughs> these people are fucking crazy. <laughs> Like, I just stood, it was like a train, it was like a car wreck. Like, yeah, I couldn't look away. Yeah, just stand there and watch it. <laughs> well, um, let's bring the podcast in. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the 10th episode. Everybody, round of applause. Yay! 10 episodes, we finally made it. 10 episode of the Thick Boy Podcast. Uh, my name is Gary, I'm here with Wesley. Hello. And we have an a extra special guest today. This is an extra thick episode. Why don't you introduce yourself, Chris Camp? Hey, what's every what's everybody? <laughs> what's up? everybody? What's every, Chris Camp. Is that a question? Start- <laughs> what is everybody? <laughs> uh, again, uh, starting off strong here, um, I am the fourth brother, and they don't acknowledge me, but yeah. The only thing separating us is blood. Yeah. That's yeah. the only thing. Pretty much. So. Yeah, you didn't have as bad of an intro as that guy who was the uh, um, uh, he was that news anchor. You know what I'm talking about? Where she they they were like uh, two college students, and like she was there was a girl and a guy, and the girl was bringing in like the segment, and like you just hear the guy go, "Gay, <laughs> <laughs> fucking shit," <laughs> and then and, and, like the 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 camera feed comes in, and he's like standing there looking down, like mumbling to himself, and like his co-anchor is she's like um. I, I, my name is, uh, and she's like, and this is AJ. And he just kind of looks up and he's like, oh, <laughs> he's like, hey, everybody, I'm AJ. And I'm used to being from the East West Coast. <laughs> East West Coast. East West. <laughs> I've been everywhere, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a very, it's a very small sliver. Yeah. You don't know much about yeah. it. <laughs> I love those like um, news anchor fails or whatever. My oh, absolute yeah. most favorite one is that one was she was like, are you spending too much at the grocery store? More on that at 11. And then like it comes to like some B-roll footage of like a boat and you just hear her go, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and then it comes back and she's like, right before we went to commercial, I said a word that some people might <laughs> My favorite one was the guy that was out in Augusta and he was like, he's that black guy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he was... He was like, I'm not here at Augusta, and like that bug, bug flew in his mouth. He's like, fuck this country ass place. <laughs> he just dropped the professionalism thing right away. He's like, this fucking country ass motherfucker. <laughs> that shit made me laugh so hard. I love the way they're talking about that. Uh, I think that girl that got killed somewhere, and they're like, the possible suspects are. <laughs> and it just shows a ham suet. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. Was, did it. Yeah. it was like some kind of clip art or something. Like that. Oh yeah, those are so fucking funny. Like some like guy from like Microsoft Word. I think I think the worst one was the CNN one where they had the 104 year old black lady. They were doing that segment on her. Mm, I've never seen that one. Oh, that one's bad. They like they're like you know telling her happy birthday and everything like that, and they go to cut to commercial, but yeah. they roll some B footage, some B roll of her like getting in her car or whatever. Yeah. And the song that they chose was oh. Why do police hate? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it's real because they had like the follow up segment, yeah. and they were like, we made a mistake with the music at the end of that <laughs> segment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one or two things happened. It was like that was somebody's last day. Oh yeah, and they didn't give a shit. Yeah, or they did it on accident. Yeah. But the question remains: Don't they have like a like a music folder or something? Yeah, like, no, how did that song? That, how did to find that song? Yeah, how did that song make it, it its way like in there? It's supposed to be like a five second delay. Yeah, somebody yeah. should have caught that. Yeah, somebody should have caught yeah. that. <laughs> but see, that's the good thing about the podcast not being live is that I could we could say whatever and I'll just bleep it out. Yeah, you can say. Cunt, fuck, ass, fucking a. You and could I can say totally, that. You can say all those words. Yeah. Totally get away You're with it. work cut out for you. Say, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've got about 20 minutes of work right at the beginning of this podcast. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I kind of wanted to uh, bring up something that's not quite topical. But uh, last night, me and Mary were watching. Uh, Oh man, what were we watching? We were watching something. I think it was fa- uh, uh, Family Guy, and they made a reference to Tila Tequila. Ooh, do you guys? I re- remember. You her. remember her? Yeah. yeah. 
I had kind of remembered her name, and like all I knew about her was like she had like a, a reality dating show at, mm-hmm. at some point. But then Mary mentioned something about her being a porn star, and I was like, a porn star? Really? And so I looked it up, and there's a lot of Tila Tequila porn, and I was like, well, is this really her? Or is this like a lookalike? Like, no. I, you know, I'm not sure. So I go to her Wikipedia page, and I'm just kind of scrolling through, and there I noticed that there's a segment, a drop down segment on her Wikipedia page called Nazi Views. Who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me read you this excerpt. <clears throat> this is a good one. In December 2013, Wynn, which is her last, she's Asian American, so her last name is N G U Tila Wynn. N G U Y E N. No. Um, Wynn. In December 2013, Wynn posted an article on her website titled "Why I Sympathize with Hitler, Part One." Whoa. Ooh. She also posted. Spicy. Per- <laughs> she, Spicy. <laughs> she also. This is 2013, so people, the social justice warrior thing is kind of coming around yeah. right now. Um. She also posted pro-Hitler and anti-Semitic comments on her Facebook page, as well as photos of herself as a scantily clad Nazi posing in front of a photo of the Auschwitz concentration camp. These actions angered her Facebook followers and resulted in Facebook blah, 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 uh, so on and so forth. She, she subsequently apologized for her early comment, blaming on depression, blah, blah, blah. I didn't do it. Something else made me do it. Blame it on depression. <laughs> Uh, three years later, in 2016, Wynn tweeted that Jewish-American political commentator Ben Shapiro should be gassed and sent back to Israel, and later posted that, quote, There are only two things in this world for which I would gladly sacrifice my own life, the destruction of all Jews and preservation of the white race. She's not even Is white. She white? No. No. And... You know what would help Asians earn respect? An Asian version of Adolf Hitler. I want that person to be me. <laughs> what? She, just, she went off the fucking she, rails. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, I was reading through this, and I was like, is this a fucking joke? That's like fucking cuckoo clock shit. <laughs> like, I want to save the world from this Zionist disease. In June 2016, Tila Tequila accused Sarah Silverman and the Jews of killing Jesus. Sarah Silverman? <laughs> <laughs> and then recently, or the most recent that I've been able to find, she posted this to, I don't know if this is Facebook or, or what. She posted, when I was at the new church earlier today, and as I started praying, I saw another vision where I was standing exactly where I was when all of a sudden I started flying up higher and higher into the heavens. Sort of like when you're in an elevator and it shoots up really fast. But I was going super, super fast in the vision God showed me as I was praying and worshiping him. Then I asked God, what's going on now? And he responded to me saying, I am about to exalt you in front of everyone. Whoa. So I guess this is what God has been preparing me for. LSD? There's <laughs> The rest of this is in all caps. She's screaming. The entire world will witness this. Dang. And let me just predict ahead of time what will happen once I start to do supernatural things in Jesus' name, such as healing people and casting out demons. And it just goes on like that for a while. Jesus Christ. So, Tila Tequila, who I guess came to the forefront of MTV in 2000, whatever, went from being a reality TV star to a pornographic actress to a full-on fucking Nazi. Yeah. To a militant Christian. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> and it's what, like... What it's like, it's like... That's a turn. It's like a weird, like, Forrest gump S story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it just keeps getting worse. <laughs> it's like... What's it? There's like... What's that Forrest Gump music they play the entire time? Yeah. There's like a particular song they play yeah. the entire time. Like a, it's like a recurring theme. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like, but you think about like all these people who get accused of being Nazis for like these little tiny yeah, things. That's literally. <laughs> I have never heard of any of this with Tila Tequila until yeah. I looked it up yesterday. Yeah. I was like, why like, is nobody like, talking about want, this? You want somebody to be mad at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, be yeah. mad at Asian Hitler. Asian <laughs> Hitler. An Asian Hitler. <laughs> Not it's only like, did she want, it's like, I think a, essentially they have that in North Korea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like not only did she want an Asian Hitler, she wanted to be yeah, Asian. She Hitler. wanted to be the set Asian your Hitler. goals higher. Yeah. Become Asian Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do not simply do, do not simply wish for him. <laughs> do not simply wish. Uh, she um. This is, this, is, this is like the only fun fact to know about Tila Tequila. She was at an ICP show. It's already that weird. explains everything. Yeah. That explains everything. That explains everything. She got on stage with them. Yeah. Took her shirt off, exposed her breasts, and the ICP dudes were like, 
Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Kicked her off stage. For ICP like, to be like, get your titties off yeah, stage. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, they knew it, so they must have yeah. known yeah. Uh, this it, Asian like, Hitler stuff like, before everyone was like, she's fucking nuts. In <laughs> 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 full cloud makeup, yeah. people yeah. having sex in the crowd, yeah. throwing hatchets. Yeah. Just like, looking at her like, this person isn't stable. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry you can't be a juggalo. <laughs> Aren't there like a lot of like underage fans too, like ICP concerts? I mean, they appeal know. greatly to like you know the 12 to 15 year old demographic. I would love to go to a nice. I'm afraid. I'm yeah. scared. You might see Asian <laughs> Hitler's tits. <laughs> Asian yeah. Hitler's tits. I don't know. Like I don't know if I could infiltrate. Like I don't know if I could do the makeup ride. Yeah. If there's like a someone who checks, <laughs> <laughs> you'd end up doing like the star, like, like the guy from Chips. Like, I'm just like Peter Chris and Ace Frehley. You dress like Gene Simmons. You're like, oh fuck, wrong yeah. concert. <laughs> Or you just show up as like one of the, like a fuck one of the people from Guar. <laughs> R.I.P. Odorous Ungerous, you will be missed. <laughs> they were fucking crazy too. They were, but man, like, they put on a good show. Yeah, they were. Was it like they used to have like a big cannon? They'd shoot like sperm and blood all, yeah, over, all over the crowd. Were they banned from like Georgia? Are they banned from like a lot of states because of? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Blood and semen yeah, antics. Like, you, you can't do that. They also like would like, do you're like gonna get people sick. Yeah, <laughs> they would also do like fake decapitations and stuff on um, on stage. Like I think they they had a recurring thing where they decapitated uh, Hitler. I'm pretty sure it was really <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Regular Hitler, not Asian. Original, original the flavor. Original, yeah. And not sweet and spicy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see uh, Guar doing a cover of Carry On My Wayward Son? Uh uh-uh. uh. It's sick. Uh, yeah, I've shown it you to you before, yeah. yeah. It's they're so that but that band was really talented. Yeah. Like they really honed in on like how to make that like it's kinda like punk rock. Yeah. Um, that kind of music. So yeah. they took like Wayward Son. I don't know if they had a lot of time to practice it or what, or they just went right off the rails with it. But uh, yeah, it's incredible. And Odorous Ungerous was that their leader singer. Yeah. He's so fucking funny. Like he's just, he gets in that character and he's just yeah. like shooting off lines and stuff. Yeah. He's awesome. But yeah, I think he passed away in like 2014 or something like that. Well, the interesting thing too is like most of the time, like when I hear like regular, well, like new age like metalcore bands or whatever, like when they cover like different songs and stuff, most of the time I'm like, I don't know if I can distinguish whether or not the song's better because I hate the pop so much. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, (laughs) it's like, this is the version of music that I like. You know what I mean? Because it's like, oh shit, that sounds a bajillion times better than the original. I'll be entirely honest. I think that Five Finger Death Punch has some great covers. Yeah, absolutely. I think I've liked... All their original stuff is just too edgy for me, yeah. and it's kind of lame. But like, were they the ones that did Blue on Black? Yeah, yeah, that a was a good one. Cover their yeah. drummer has like a sick breakdown in the middle yeah. of that song. Um, Disturbs cover of Sound of Silence is yeah, better than really the original. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it is. <clears throat> but um, I'm a I'm a Disturbed purist, so I'm not a. Fan you don't, you don't like the covers? Yeah, no. You like the songs where he screams about his mom in the middle of it? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I remember the first time I heard that song, I was like, fuck, this like, This song's heavy as fuck. And then he did that, I was like, ugh. Well, like, yeah, because I only ever heard it on the radio, like, yeah. for years and years. And then I got, like, uh, I downloaded, like, an MP3 off of LimeWire or whatever. Yeah. And Bear that part share. came along, and I'm like... Um, this is super awkward. Yeah. <laughs> There's a meme, and it was like, hey, y'all remember when the lead singer disturbed was just in the vocal booth, and his mom came and beat the shit out of him? <laughs> 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 like, I wonder if no one in, this, like, in the band knew it was coming either. They were just like, man, yeah, like, I'm whatever. really glad we got David on Vokes. Yeah. Uh. Like he no, didn't, he, no. he didn't like, tell him he was gonna do that. Like how looks, and they go, and they're just they're just keeping that bridge going. Like, yeah. do we? What do we do? <laughs> and there's a uh, was it is it sweet child of mine? There's a, like they had to do a breakdown where he just see, keeps saying, "Where do we go now?" And I always like to think that like he doesn't know where to go in the song. <laughs> So he's just like, he's singing that, and they're like, oh, yeah, this is pretty groovy. But he's like trying to communicate yeah. to the band, like, where do we where go now? We go? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, hey, man. Where do we go now? He's, a, he's, having, like an emotional, he's having like an emotional breakdown and anxiety attack. Because <laughs> he can't remember the rest of the song. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, one of my other favorite things I always imagined was, have you ever heard that country song? Um, <clears throat> I think it's called Chillin' on a Dirt Road or something like that. Oh, yeah. He, he's singing about, so he's singing about, like most modern country songs, like fucking nothing of any substance. No. He's literally singing about drinking and driving and going down a dirt road. <laughs> no. But I like to think, in, like in his mind, it's like this really like profound like uh, retrospective experience that he's having but in real life he's just like slumped over drunk in his truck just like <laughs> slow just like slowly going in circles just <laughs> 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 In a Chuck E. Cheese parking lot. <laughs> oh, good. Do you remember that country song I sent to you about the uh, sweet potato dish? Did you ever listen to that? Uh. Oh, really? I sent Gary a song I made. I'm trying to get big in oh, the country. Oh, I yeah. remember something about that. I want to get, yeah. and it's about a sweet potato dish. It's all a metaphor for having sex. Yeah. That's all I got right now. <laughs> that's all it has to be. That's all it's got to be. Yeah, I don't think anything has to be anything of substance. Up. They don't do that yeah. anymore. Yeah. You don't have to tell stories anymore. Yeah. yeah. It's like we can we can yeah. make it in the kitchen. We can make it in the den. We can eat it all up, then make it again. <laughs> eat it all up. <laughs> yes. I don't like that. It's hot. <laughs> Coming up here, number six. It's uh, Chris, Chris Camperston. What's a country <laughs> name? I don't know. You'd, be, you'd have to be like, it has to be like, um, Corey Buffton. Yeah, something like oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Corey Buffton yeah. with the uh, speed. Speed. <laughs> speed. He's very explicitly <laughs> singing about doing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a song about meth. No, no, no euphemisms whatsoever. I wrote this song after I, I love lost meth, my kids. Cause my death. <laughs> I wrote this song after I did meth. I did meth. <laughs> you can relate. We are in Paulden County. <coughs> Oh, I had an encounter with the meth head yesterday. Really? Yes, I was at um, the butcher uh, down the street here. Mm-hmm. And as I was leaving, so like when you go to leave, you kind of, you know, the like you get all your stuff in like the main area. And then uh, you go through that big doorway and on the left is like the ca- the cashier or whatever. And the entryway is on the right. As I was walking out, I had my basket in my right hand and I accidentally bumped it into somebody. And I went to say, oh, I'm sorry, my bad. And at the same time I said that, this five foot four, one hundred pound meth head said, Watch where you're going, fat ass. Oh. And I knew it was that bad because like all the people around me kind of was like, Whoa, like what was that uh, about? I'd have, I'd have been like, What the fuck you saying? <laughs> <laughs> it just got wrong in his face. <laughs> well, I turned around and looked at him and he looked at me and he goes, You heard what I said, fat ass? And I'm just looking. I'm like, is this really happening right now? I'm like, you cracked out piece of shit. And I was, I just had this moment where I was like, you know what? I could use this. Yeah. So I set my basket down. I took my hat, my glasses off, and threw them in my basket. And he's backing away from me, yeah. of course, going, come on, come on, something like that. And at that point, like, all the people had come around the counter, and yeah. they ushered him out of the building. Yeah. But he was so small. And it's like I had him by, like, a good foot yeah. and 130 pounds. Yeah. You know, it's like all I had to do is get my hands on him. Yeah. But it's like, what the fuck is, wh- who are these people that are just like looking for a confrontation? Like going out into the world, like the first person that touches me or looks at me is. You forget the people that we're related to. Nah, well, yeah, that's entirely true. It's weird because I was thinking about that and I forgot that y'all related to them. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, those people. Yeah. yeah those people. <laughs> Because yeah. most of the time I think, I'm like, maybe we're the weird ones. <laughs> we, we're not. We are. It's like, it seems like everybody else has got, like, weird shit going on. But <laughs> I feel like we're pretty normal. Ones, and it's like, well, <laughs> if everybody else is fucking crazy, then maybe we're the weird ones. I would say that usually that's the case. But I think in this one, we had this, like, quantifiable that we're the normal ones. Yeah. Well, it's like... Uh, I just got done reading 1984 by George Orwell. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. I've never read it. So. It's, it's a really good book. And then in the book, they talk about like uh, this like double speak or whatever. It's like you saying something while you know that it's incorrect, but you've trained your brain to know that to say that it is correct. Yeah. So like deep down unconsciously, you know that what you're saying is not it's not correct. It's yeah. not right. It's that whole two plus two equals five thing. But like on a surface level, you believe it to be yeah, true. Yeah, on a surface level, you believe it to be true. That way you can operate and function in society. Hmm. But subconsciously, it's like you can't let anybody else see that 
But at the same time, it's like your brain is like me and you both know that that's not right. Like, right. It's but incorrect. like you're operating on the outside. Yeah. You're kind of pushing away that moral opposition or whatever. Yeah. And sort of like at the end of the book, like this guy, it's not a forward, I guess. What's I don't remember what it was called. Epilogue. Yeah, an epilogue or somebody like wrote something afterwards mm-hmm. or whatever. Like an anecdote. Kind of, an anecdote. So like they were explaining, it was like you even see it like when people go to work for like corporations and stuff where it's like they're like, oh, our product is the best when it's like in reality, it's like maybe it isn't the best. Yeah. It's like when you go to work for another company, it's like, well, this product's the best because I'm not working for this yeah. company. You well, no, I mean? no company is ever going to be like, our product ain't the best. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Here it is. Try it out. Our like, product's yeah. third best at <laughs> best. Yeah. But I mean, I'll honest. say I'll say that about the podcast. It's like if you don't like it, then <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like cool. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. We're not getting paid to do. Yeah, this. we're not getting paid to do this. <laughs> so is it like double speak, like more of like a manipulative thing, or more of like like are you trying to use it to manipulate people, or try to use it to like make myself feel better about what I'm doing? Like basically, like sort of like my this... my innards are like, hey, this is well, wrong. But the way that the book presented it was that like. The way that the party that took over the area or whatever, like that's how they use it to manipulate people to get them to do what they what it is that they wanted them to do. Like they were taking words out of the vocabulary so that you couldn't properly explain yourself. Mm-hmm. And so, like throughout, like the it's book, very orchestrated. Yeah, it's very orchestrated. Yeah. Like like uh, changing uh, like the past. Like they had you just you have to read the book. I don't want to explain the whole thing because <clears throat> it's a really good book and you should yeah, read it. Yeah. yeah. So I just thought it was interesting. It's like. How on the outside it's like you say these things, but down deep it's like you know that that's incorrect. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know. I think like you see that a lot today, like where people are like they're saying something, but it's like me and you both know yeah. that that's not how you really feel. Right, but nobody's you know? going to bring that out. But nobody's nobody is going to bring that mm-hmm. out of you. <clears throat> like you kind of have to come to that realization yourself. Yeah. And well, you might I mean, not ever come to that realization. Yeah. You know? Well, I also think you know it's it's probably easier to you know, j- just adhere to the status quo than it is to to say, this is how I really feel about, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, like I, I, you know, there's, especially with like sociological or social, uh, you know, social things. Yeah. Like, you know, the status quo is to believe that X is acceptable. Yeah. <clears throat> and you may agree and say, yes, X is acceptable, but you really feel deep down X is not acceptable. Yeah. <clears throat> I know a lot of people, and you've, you've, you know, you've probably caught people doing it, too, like people that you know personally, who you've had conversations with in private. And when you when you have a private conversation with somebody, a lot of, like, your true feelings start coming yeah. out. And you really, and when it's a one-on-one thing with somebody, you really get a good glimpse at, like, who they actually are. Yeah. And a lot of times you really mesh. There's a lot of that yeah. you agree on. And even if you don't, but, most of the time, <clears throat> if you're having a one-on-one conversation with, with somebody, it's easier to let bygones be bygones. So it is, like, yeah. It's like, I don't agree with you, but at the same time, it's like, I respect your opinion. Right, exactly. And it's like, me and you didn't have the same life, so there's yeah. no there's no way that I can understand where it is that you're coming exactly. from. I mean, it's easier to be yourself when it's one-on-one. Cause you're yeah, like than, like 20. In a, than in a crowd, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. if you have a, a dissenting opinion, then everybody feels like they can turn and you're the, well, you're the odd yeah, one out. Yeah, you're the odd one out, right? So you know, so it's easier to do the group think thing. Yeah, right? yeah. And by, that's by, where, by law like, of statistics, that makes you exactly. Wrong. So that's yeah. where like the double speak comes in, mm-hmm. right? It's like deep, deep down inside, you know that you don't really feel that way. But in order for you to be able to function in society, the way that society is set up, yeah, is that you know that this is what you have to do. Yeah. And you got to hedge your bets. <laughs> like, that's what <laughs> yeah. Maddie and I both talk about that at our works. Anytime, I mean, my 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 job, I mean, they, they brought in a lot of politics and social justice is in their thing. And so we don't want anyone to ever know our true. Yeah. We want you to think what you want to think yeah. about us yeah. without me, like, lying. So if you're talking about politics, we're just like, yeah, man. All politicians suck. And they're like, yeah, they do. And it's like, as long as you tread that line, they're like, Chris is on my side. It's like, no. I'm not against any of yeah. It's like, no, yeah. I'm just afraid well, of yeah, you. Like, there's guys that like I work with and stuff, and it's like, and I've had like one-on-one conversations with them or whatever, and it's like, I certainly have differing opinions than they do on a lot of stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I try to not make it like a personal thing. It's just mm-hmm. like, it just is what you it had is. different life experiences yeah. than I did. So. Well, it's, you know, with my job, I work with a lot of people that are older than me. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a construction job, and... You know, I'm not, my position in that company is not, you know, necessarily hard labor. So I I spend a lot of time 
watching other people do that work mm-hmm. and you know talking to them and everything and just even like having even having totally different you know um experiences with labor mm-hmm. you know can can sway you to feel one way and think one way rather than another <clears throat> and you know you know it's a lot of time race is brought up um immigration's brought up um immigration's a big one oh, yeah. um all kinds of things like that. And I, I don't really try to give away too much about how I feel about those topics, mm. but I listen to them. And even if I really like on a base level disagree with like what they're saying or how they're feeling, it's like at the same time, it's like I, at the very least, I understand you had a different experience than I did. Yeah. And, you know, your way of thinking was, was shaped differently than mine was. Yeah. And if you're, if you're prone to, to staying in this bubble where, you know the 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 feeling and the thoughts are all the same all the time. No. You aren't going to really cultivate anything that kind of dissents from that at no. all. Whereas if you like, I mean, like even like in high school or you know school in general, I kind of clicked with all groups. Yeah. No. So I had friends that were you know, especially in high school, it's very clicky. Mm-hmm. No. You know, so you had like the goths and you have like the black kids and the you know the rednecks and then like no. the athletes and all that stuff. And I kind of had like a friend in each of those groups. Yeah. And. You could take, you know, say you had five different groups of people and one subject, you would get five different viewpoints on that one subject. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I remember that's kind of how it was. I was like, I just, I'll be friends with anybody as long as, as long as I think you're a good person. As like, long as you're friendly. Yeah, as long as you're friendly. Yeah. It's like, then it, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Why was the, the Villarica lunchroom like a, a prison yard when it came to <laughs> how we segregated ourselves? Yeah, I that mean, yeah. Yeah. I it remember really was, coming yeah. in as a freshman. Oh, and you and knew the tables, too. Yeah. yeah. My my first week as a freshman, I sat with, like, two white kids. We, we were friends in middle school. No. Two white kids, a guy who was Puerto Rican, a black kid, and by one weekend, you, boom, split yeah. up. And you're like, oh, well, if you're Mexican, you're supposed to sit over there. If you're white, you're supposed to sit over here. Yeah. And if you're, like, it, it blew and we were, we were never told that. No. <laughs> no. Nobody ever said it or anything like that. It was just like this understood, like, uh, sociological thing that everybody yeah. kind of picked up on. And it switched when you <clears throat> left the lunchroom. Yeah. Like, in the classrooms, you were sitting <laughs> by each other and you were all yeah. friends and even after yeah. school. But in the lunchroom, it was a fully... See, I remember in the lunchroom, like, it, it used to piss me off so bad that they did that. So I would just I would go sit at a new table sometimes. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, guys, how's it going? I'm going to sit down. And they'd be like... <laughs> what? Who's this? Who's this? <laughs> I remember they gave us a science seating at lunch. They tried to do that yeah, one time. Remember, they tried to mix us up. Nah, it doesn't, They're like, we got to get this segregation thing under control yeah. that these kids have imposed on themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and they John tried, verbally. Yeah. Verbally. <laughs> it was like it was like a social experiment or yeah. something. And I don't think anybody did it. We just no. all sat where we've been, yeah. been sitting. It, it's so weird. And I, like I said, my first week there at school, I remember we sat down yeah. and this uh, group of chicks came up and were like, Y'all have to move. Yeah. It wasn't even like, it says me and my yeah. mixed diverse group yeah. of friends. Like, you can't be here. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, there's no side seating, so yeah. we just had to move, and yeah. we did. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just like a, a comfort zone thing. You know, it was, it's... You, right, it's easier to be around people that you identify with. Yeah. Because it's and, harder It's harder to be around people that you have less in common yeah, with, right? Right. So, and say, like, in a public school, like, the class system doesn't really exist. Like, no one's really... Like, if you were rich, you lived in Fairfield and made, like, $80,000. Yeah. And if you were poor, you didn't live in Fairfield. Like, that was kind of the... Yeah. yeah. So everyone was really yeah. close it was to like, together. It's like, oh, like, you live in Fairfield or you live in, like, Mirror Lake. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, oh, you're... Yeah. you're I remember like, being like, always oh, your family tie, has money. It's like, no, like, my your family's, family's in rich. Debt. <laughs> he's, <laughs> like, he's like, just because we live in Fairfield doesn't mean you're rich. I'm like, yeah. you're yeah, richer than me, bro. Yeah, it does. Let's be honest here. Yes. <laughs> uh, compared to like Maddie, Maddie went to Queen of Angels, like Catholic school. Yeah. And it's like she knew people that lived in like big time gated communities yeah. with a gate around their house. Yeah, <laughs> like, a gated community yeah. within a gated yeah. community. <laughs> and it's like the stuff that those kids did. And yeah. It was like they had the classes. But then with her, there was only like. She was like the fourth most diverse person because yeah. her mom's Mexican and everyone else is like. She was exotic. Yes. Yeah, for, for that fact alone. 
Everybody mm. else is just white, just is pasty just, pill white. Dude, I went, I went to a wedding with her, and I was like, they, it's like every dude there called each other and was like, what are we wearing? The bridal, the, the groom, yeah. the groomsmen, and every other male his age that came there, all blue suit, brown shoes, white shirt, like black tie. It blew my mind. There was like yeah. a conference. Yeah. For this You're like, like, is this a cult? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It like, was they have weird. a hive mind. Yeah. <laughs> and Maddie, Maddie makes a good point. She was like, when you're in the private school like that, with the money like that, yeah. you don't know what it's like outside. Yeah. And you don't know how to interact with the other kids. And so, like, yeah. they're, they all marry each other. They never find new friends. Yeah. They all stay that way because they... That's what's comfortable. That's what's comfortable. Yeah. And it's literally such a, I want to say sheltered environment, but a different In environment. In some ways it is. It yeah. is sheltered, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it's for her. She was just the odd one out at private school. All of her friends went to public school. And, yeah. you know, found me. Not a not a rich white kid. What a Villarica native. Villarica native. <laughs> Been mud. Well, I remember Allison telling me because she went to to like the same schools like Northgate and that kind of stuff mm-hmm. before they moved to Villarica, and she was saying she's always told me she was like it's so much different at Villarica because it was like you kind of you kind of knew people kind of had money or whatever, but it wasn't. She says it wasn't like as um as like mean as yeah. it was as like other schools. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, everybody was kind of in the same boat. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know We're I mean? all at Villarica High School, yeah. let's be honest. Here. Yeah, yeah, you all yeah. live here. We're better than Temple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's kind yeah. of like... Everybody looks big... down on Mount Zion. Yeah, we yeah. Down we're down better Mount than Zion. Temple. We're not as good as Carol. Yeah. yeah. We like, know our place. Yeah. We all got it. I think that's what made it easier. It's like, there's nothing you could really do to kind of, sh- if you apparently did have money to showcase it, yeah. other than live on the lake in Mirror Lake yeah. or live on the lake in Fairfield. Yeah. Yeah. And that was really all you had. And it yeah. was like, cool, we're invading your house. Yeah. Like, we're going, yeah. you know, and it's like, that's all you, that's all you could do. Couldn't drive fancy cars because we yeah. didn't know what fancy yeah. cars were. Didn't know what fancy was. Yeah. yeah. It's like, ooh, you have a, a late model fucking <laughs> Altima. <laughs> I, can, I can remember as a kid thinking a PT Cruiser was like the cream of the crop vehicle. I'm like, look at this shit, bro. Like, it gets bigger as it gets back. <laughs> it just like blew my mind. I thought some kid had a PT Cruiser just because I was stupid. And he's like, yeah, man, the seats face backwards. I'm like, I don't remember seeing that. And I got there and it was like a nice mom drove, like an 85 like station. <laughs> wagon with extra seats and like that looked yeah. backwards and I was like I had to ride with this kid on a field trip because I thought he drove a P- his mom drove a PT Cruiser I had to sit in this old ass so you're like, like I'm getting in wagon. that PT Cruiser oh man and so when I got the chance I bought a PT Cruiser for a thousand dollars that was you 20 th- yeah, that. you had a PT Cruiser I did it was great wonderful car I was as the fanciest dude out there. <laughs> like, I'm so fancy. Pulling up fancy. to like <laughs> Mercedes, like G Wagons, <laughs> and being like, Sunroof! <laughs> God, our dad had a PT Cruiser for years. Mm. Years. I mean, years that, our years. dad was has always been that way with vehicles. Yeah. He's just like milked every bit of life he could <laughs> out of it. Oh, yeah. And I think David has actually got that. He does. PT Cruiser, and it's still yeah. going. Because there at the end, it sounded like it was going to throw a fucking rod. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it was, was like, it sounded like a diesel engine. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, mm, I think it's going to break down. I think they did a lot of track and field trips. I remember having the shot puts banging around yeah, in the back of that thing. The <laughs> Probably warped the frame. <laughs> it was all scratched up and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't one of the windows get busted out or something by a baseball? Am I remembering that correctly? Uh... I don't know. No, it got dented by a baseball. Yeah, we left the window down during a rainstorm. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> no, you were thinking of when was it? Brandon threw that football and hit the truck and broke the windshield, and he ran away. Yes. <laughs> and that yeah, was the same he... day. That was the same day his mom had bought that uh, that old school Mustang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she like pulled up, and Dad was like, "Hey, I need to talk to you." She's like, "Oh God." And then the <laughs> smile just <laughs> fell off her face. <laughs> I remember that too. We were all standing in the front yard throwing the football around, and he threw it, and it just <laughs> smashed the windshield. And he didn't say anything to anybody. Yeah, he's he didn't even like he look. Just, he immediately <laughs> just did a, a ninety degree turn and ran to his house yeah. like Forrest Gump. Yeah. 
We were like, what? <laughs> How did he crack it with a football? It just it hit was it. just an just old windshield. Right. I think yeah. that was the original windshield that was on it. It yeah. was like a 1987. Yeah. So and it was like 2004. So that windshield was almost 20 Jesus. years old. So. <laughs> Had seen a lot of sun. Yeah. It was, it was probably ready to yeah. be replaced. It was going to be anything if it yeah. wasn't that football. Yeah, I remember that because that kid that lived down the street from us. What was his name? Kyle? Yeah. Yeah, he, he was like a big... Toker. Yeah. I remember he, because Brandon smashed that windshield, and he just goes, oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love that old truck. I think it was a tank. It was. Remember when it rolled into that girl's car like two miles an hour and totaled yeah, and totaled it? her fucking car. <laughs> Jeez. Was this the red one with the two gas tanks? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. man. That's good memories. That was the one that, yeah. that uh, I drove to Mikey's bachelor party. Yeah. We, have you heard the when we went to? Was the that when his dad fell in the fire? His dad, no, his, his dad, dad exploded. exploded. He didn't fall in the fire. <laughs> but he fell he in the river. He erupted into. And a, I got a concussion. He <laughs> dove. He, he swan dived yeah. into yeah. three oh, inch so deep he was, riverbed. He was just like Rum Springer. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he turned around, Mikey's dad was injuring himself. <laughs> so he did that. Me and Ross were like chilled in the in the in the hammock. We 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 fell asleep. In the same hammock. Don't know why we were sleeping in the same hammock. There yeah. was one literally right beside yeah. the other. And um, well, you the you guys thought that we were going to go tubing and then go home. Yeah, you didn't realize it was an overnight. It was a, stay, it was a spin yeah. night party. I thought we were all camping, so I brought a tent. I was yeah. the only person that did that. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we were just claiming things. Yeah. And uh, anyways, we're sleeping. All of a sudden, we hear some sort of commotion, and then just hear. <laughs> 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 I look out and I don't have my glasses on. So I just see big yeah. orange red. And then it goes down and no one's saying anything. Like there's no. You're like, oh my god. Yeah, and I say something to Ross. Like, should we check on that? He's like, they'll come get us. <laughs> like, if the house is on fire, if someone's dead, they'll come get us. And we uh, we we got to sleep. And someone wakes up and was like, hey, my Mikey's dad caught himself on fire. <laughs> Hey, hey, he's like, we got to take him and John to the hospital because John, our buddy, had gotten like third degree sunburn. Was, is the I've never have in my never, life he seen was a sunburn like purple. that. Yeah. It he was purple. He was like that color purple. Dude, he was, dude, it was. And he was wearing a wife beater. I wasn't wearing a shirt. This shows how much he never got into the sun. Yeah. We were on that river and we got out. He was bright red already. And we're like, yeah. he was sunburned. And he kept on doing this. No. No. It's like, yeah. no, no, you're sunburned. Yeah. Like, listen, I know you don't have a whole lot of experience with the sun. <laughs> <laughs> you need to put on some sunscreen. <laughs> Dude, but yeah, so by the time they got his dad, so his dad threw a can of like kerosene in the oh, fire God. or something. No, 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 yeah. he, I, he, he held it over his head. Oh, Jesus. And he squeezed it. <laughs> and the stream came out into the fire, and then the fire went back up the stream <laughs> and, the and blew up over his head. <laughs> he was such a dickhead yeah. the whole ride. He kept on looking at Daniel. Daniel, he'd look at him and be laughing. He'd go, you're an ugly motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and he, like, goes, he looks at Daniel, he goes, you're the ugliest motherfucker I've ever seen. <laughs> he was just being a son of a bitch. He got so drunk so fast. And, uh, he, did, well, he drank like a whole bottle of Crown before yeah, he even got man. on the river. It was wild. So they didn't catch themselves on fire. Like I said, they woke us up. They're like, we got to take both of them to the hospital. And John just in the back. His facial expression hasn't changed since before he got on the river. He was just like, man up, man. <laughs> and they took him to the hospital for some yeah. part. And his dad had to go to the hospital. And so we ride with Gary. And it's just, it's me. Uh, Ross in the middle? It's me, and Ross, middle. and then you on the end. Yeah, so yeah, it was yeah. that bench yeah. seat. Yeah, it comes yeah. on that bench yeah. seat. And uh, we got the windows down, and we're on some, like, my brain remembers it very odd. Like, everything's dark, headlights are on, all we can see is the road. It's like yeah. three lanes. Yeah, it's like a like highway, that. like 285. Yeah. Yeah. And Gary's girlfriend at the time calls him. And we're, of course, she calls him, so Ross and I do, like, the typical, uh, 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 make it yeah. money noises. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, he was like, give me a second. And he puts his phone down and jerks the wheel all the way to the left of the emergency. <laughs> Like, and all the way to the right, and all the way to the right, and it's like a movie. Ross the and I just back end of that truck is just Dude, like fish just tailing. Like he decided that like death was an yeah. option today, and we're just ah, I'm crying. And he's just like shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. And he stops and levels it out. We're just like. 
They were dead quiet after that. They didn't make a fucking peep. Oh, man. <laughs> it was just a total overreaction. That truck, that truck went through a lot. Yes, it did. Oh. Do you remember? I know you remember the time that oh. we were coming down that road. And I was like, I was like, I'm gonna go real fast, and it just rained. Yeah, those tires were so fucking bald. Oh my god, <laughs> they were racing slicks essentially. Yeah. Like, do you know where, um, you know where the Texaco station is at? Like, if you're going to mom, our mom and dad's house, yeah, it's right a Shell there. station now. It's, it's, a, Texaco. it's yeah, a Shell yeah. station now. So there's a road you make a left there, and it takes you out. Um, not on that road. not the one on the east side of Willowbrook, but the one before that. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And it runs like. Uh, it's not parallel. Where it runs perpendicular to uh, it goes Ledbetter. Out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It so, goes to Harold Lane. Is that it? Maybe Harold Lane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the one before Harold Road. Yeah. So we make a left there. Harlan Lane. Harlan, Harlan Lane. Lane. Yeah. So we're. <laughs> I might be incriminating myself here. But <laughs> <No>. <laughs> statute, statute limitations. limitations yeah. so. <laughs> so we're going down this road and it just rained. Like a minute. Ago. Like a minute before. Yeah, not just a fucking. <laughs> Stomp it. <laughs> and that truck, that truck was loud. <laughs> it's <was> like, woo! <laughs> 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 and so we get to going around this curve, and like in the middle of the curve, I'm like, oh no, we're going too fast. Because <laughs> we come around the curve, and we're just like drifting around the curve. <laughs> like the truck. The truck is like sideways in the road, like going yeah. like for a long <laughs> way. For, for a long way, and Gary's sitting there with his arm up on the seat like that. Yeah, the whole entire I, time I'm just sitting yeah. like this, and I'm like fighting. Like, <laughs> and so I never get off the gas, and I just jerk it the other way. He <laughs> never once took his foot off the gas. He had it floored through this whole thing. And so it does like this, and I jerk it the other way, and the back end just goes. <laughs> and like it. flings us all the way around, and we run off the road, and we hit. There was a there was a like a, a field with cattle in it, and there was like you know those big posts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it knocked the fucking post over, <laughs> and bar bar just went. And so. <laughs> the whole time, I still got my foot like mashed all the yeah. way down. Yeah, you know. So we he has smashed into that fence. And Wes is like white knuckling <laughs> the steering wheel and his foot's all the way down on the gas still. We're stopped because we're just spinning tires in yeah, the mud in right the now. Mud and just and flinging just, mud. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I told Wes, I was like, you might want to take your foot off the gas before you get traction and just shoot back off down the road. <laughs> It was amazing how calm I was through the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> I, remember, I remember you said that. I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> and the funniest part was <laughs> there was a trailer across the road, and the guy was standing out in front of his trailer and just like looking at the <laughs> Just watched the whole thing unfold. <laughs> the funniest part was is that, like we just slowly pulled off, got back on the road, <laughs> and he drove like. <laughs> <laughs> it drove like a normal speed. <laughs> I always oh, wondered God. what that looked like from his perspective because, you know like, he heard it. Yeah, he heard us coming like as soon as we turned <laughs> onto that road, yeah. and like, because there was like a, it was like trees, and we came out of that. We came out of the clearing of trees sideways, <laughs> like so before he like, pointing at him. Yeah, <laughs> before he even saw us, we're just like Tokyo drifting down the road. <laughs> Swing up across the shoulder and smash the fence. <laughs> Spin the tires for like five seconds and then just like just slowly get back on the road and go. Sunday I feel, morning. I feel like we should have been playing. Was it that uh that song that they were playing that Tokyo Drift movie? Oh yeah, yeah. You know the one they put in all the memes. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, tell me if you know how to do it, Tokyo. I remember, like, the whole thing was just a blur until, like, I remember being like, oh, fuck, I need to cut the wheel. And then I remember hitting the thing. And I was like, oh, God. And I was just like, I was just like, hold on to it like this. Like, <laughs> and all the weight was in the front of that truck. Oh, too. yeah. Like, there's no weight in the back. <laughs> no weight in the back. It very easily could have flipped over. And oh, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a good thing we hit that fucking post. Yeah, it was a very good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered what it was like from his perspective. 
He's like, these dang kids. <laughs> <laughs> he probably just shook his head and went back inside. <laughs> Gotta go fence to fix the fence tomorrow. <laughs> you know, you know that like his wife got home. He's like, I gotta fucking tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> you know that Tokyo Drift we were watching yesterday. <laughs> Oh, God. Remember because we got home and we told mom and dad that a deer ran out in front of us. And yeah. it's just the whole side of that truck. Yeah. It's just ripped barbed wire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Barbed wire. <laughs> like, you could tell, like, the truck was old and there was just, like, metal exposed yeah, underneath okay. that back corner where I hit it or whatever. <laughs> You're like, there's a lot I was, of deer. I was like, oh, God, what am I going to say? <laughs> I was like, they're going to take my license away if I tell them what I actually did. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, that truck went through a lot. <laughs> I remember um, I me and Aaron were in that truck because after you got your Avenger, I got the truck. And fucking car. <laughs> and uh, me and Aaron had a bag of Cheetos Zingers. Do you remember those? Those are Twisted Sparrow ones? No, no, no. Twisted these were, Sparrow ones. These were like little like cheese, like at the end, like the bottom of a Cheetos pan at the factory. Yeah. Just a little like nuggets of Cheetos. Huh, yeah. They scraped those up and put them in a bag and sold them. They called them Zingers. Yeah. They were just little Cheeto balls, literally like just like this. Like the crunchies. <clears throat> like the crunchies little bits. Yeah. And we thought it would be funny to throw them as, at cars as they came yeah. by. <laughs> and so like I threw one at a car. And didn't even hit it because it's, you know, it weighs nothing. It just, yeah. yeah. I threw another one. I didn't hit the car. And we're coming down Pumpkin Town, like going towards 61. Yeah. Wait, is that right? Okay, no, no, no. We were going from 61, like towards uh, towards 20. Mm-hmm. And Aaron goes, let me do it. And he grabs like a handful <laughs> and leans over me in the seat and just, bam, like that. <laughs> and, out. and they all hit this guy's windshield. <laughs> just like, bam, like that. And he turns around on the road and starts to follow us. <laughs> and I know I saw him in the rearview mirror. I was like, oh, shit. So I pulled over, like, in Mirror Lake and, like, that that uh, turnaround right there. Yeah. It wasn't a red light yet. Yeah. But there was enough room for me to get yeah. a whip, like, whip around. So I whipped around, and he passed us. And he was he looked at us. Like, he's, like, he's, he was furious. So he looked at us. And, then, like, at this point, I just start flying down Pumpkin Town yeah. Road. I get out ahead of him. I can't see him behind me anymore. I turn left behind the hospital instead of going all the way out to 61. So I go all the way back up behind Tanner. I turn right into their back parking lot. Yeah. Go through the parking lot and then turn right onto 61. (laughs) Well, he had gone all the way down and turned left onto 61. <laughs> so now we're we're, now we're, past, we're about to pass each other again. And me and Aaron were kind of laughing like, ha-ha, that guy was so mad. And I grabbed a handful of fingers <laughs> and I threw them out the window. And it hit the fucking same guy. But he, had, he, was, he was close enough to us that I was looking him in the eyes when I threw the fingers at him. <laughs> And he got turned around again, and he was right on our ass. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I can't lose him now. Yeah. I was like, I can't go home. I'm not yeah. going to my house. So I went down uh, Harold Road, and I pulled into Arian's driveway. <laughs> and he got out, <clears throat> and uh, me and Aaron both got out. And he was like a little guy. Yeah. And like, me, and him, me and Aaron were kind of you know, yeah. were tall or whatever. He got out, and we just kind of looked at him, and he was like, uh, you guys shouldn't do that kind of thing. He was like, the next guy might not be as nice as me. He just gets <laughs> back in his car and drives off. <laughs> but I just couldn't fucking believe that I hit the same guy. He must have been like, motherfucker. <laughs> it's like if he wasn't at a 10, he's an 11 now. Yeah. <laughs> just, just fucking rage. <laughs> <laughs> the berserker. <laughs> They're in the... Throwing them back, just like <laughs> in great pain. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. I just you know think back on some of the shit we did as kids. It's just like it's a wonder nobody shot us. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's what me and Allison were talking about. It's like you know, like mom and dad. I know like they were really hard on us sometimes. Yeah. But it's like, I think back, I'm like, it's probably a fucking good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we were bad fucking kids. As bad so. as we were, <laughs> if mom and dad hadn't been hard on us, we'd all be in jail yeah. probably. We never we did it. We easily went this way. <laughs> yeah. We all went, a, we, we all went this we way. We never did anything like really, really bad. No, yeah. We were just a little annoying yeah. little shits. Yeah, just mischievous. Yeah. Michael and I didn't really do too much stuff. We just did like... 
Like we you were had dri- strange things happen to you. Yeah, we had strange things. So like we used to. This one's strange. You talk about driving. Michael and I. So we worked at Insomnia. So like every Friday and Saturday, we would drive from. Um, is it called uh, Sand Hill? That's right, between yeah. Carrollton. We mm-hmm. lived there on Tulip Way, and we'd drive the back roads all the way to Villarica. Well, we got really comfortable with them. And we'd be leaving Insomnia at like 11 midnight or something. Yeah. So when we would get on the back roads, we'd turn our headlights off and just drive the whole way home with no headlights yeah. on for no reason. Yeah. And then we started doing where he would work the steering wheel and I would work the pedals. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd go the whole way home doing that. Well, there was one time we were doing it. And we happened to turn our lights on a little bit before we got to some long stretch, like right before we got home. Yeah. And we're going, and there's a guy at 2 a.m. who is dressed as Gandalf on the side of the road, I swear to like God. Like with a walking stick and a hat and like everything? Like with the whole get up. Just on the side of the road. He was like, at what the 2 a.m. And I don't say anything. <laughs> I just let it go. Yeah. And about a minute later, two minutes later, my husband goes, did you say Gandalf? <laughs> like, Dude, I saw Gandalf. <laughs> like, oh, I thought I was going crazy. Yeah. And it's like, out of everything, like that, then the one time we decided to turn yeah. the lights on, it was like, Gandalf was there for us. But did we drive? I would use the steering wheel, he'd use the pedals. We just did stupid crap. Didn't y'all go through a wormhole? We once? went through a wormhole when we first moved up to Sand Hill. We were driving around trying to learn our way, and there's this car that gets right on our ass. Yeah. And I mean, like, I can see the person in the wheel, like, behind us. Yeah. It's like a, like, a, like a twilight zone. Yeah. And, they're, like, I can't see their headlights anymore. I can see them behind the wheel, and Michael's trying to lose them. And so he goes on this back road, yeah. and all of a sudden this huge thing of fog just, boom, hits us. And the headlights go away. And it's gone, and we have no clue where we're at. We don't have the smartphones yet because yeah. it's like, I don't know what time it is. What time? Yeah. What year it is? And we drive around, and we can't figure out anywhere we are for about 30, 45 minutes. Just driving around, can't find anybody, can't yeah. do anything. Gas stations are closed. It's so damn weird. Yeah. And uh, we finally find one that's open. And what's weird is Michael and I have two completely different recollections of what happened, as far as who we talked to. Really? I swear that we talked to uh, kind of like older, well-off gentlemen. Yeah. He swears we talked to a Jamaican man. It's incredibly weird. <laughs> That's like <laughs> very that, different. That we have that. <laughs> but we both think he said the same thing. Yeah. We asked him, hey, can you tell us where we are? We're lost. Yeah. And he looked at me and he says, you're wherever you want to be. And Michael Sawyer, this a Jamaican man, yeah. said, you're wherever you... I'm uh, uh, yeah. Indian. I can't do any <laughs> accents. <laughs> we were doing that Indian accent all yeah, yeah. You're wherever you want to be, Mom. Yeah. And uh, we get in the car, go straight, and we get to our house in a minute. And it was incredibly weird. Yeah, and the, like, like I said, the we get home, fuck? and I'm like, yeah, this old man told us that. He's like, no, a Jamaican man told us that. <laughs> yeah, and man. it was like, like no, what didn't. the hell happened? <laughs> and so it's like we got sucked into this wormhole, and we were together, but experiencing like yeah, different two different reality. Yeah. yeah, like a project. It was super weird. And, uh, aliens. Damn aliens. I don't believe in aliens. I'm laid out there. You don't believe in aliens. I don't believe in aliens. Really? really? Yeah. Interesting. I figured... Like nothing, you know, not even like microorganisms? I think there's like life. I like the idea of like... But you're talking about like a sentient species. You don't think that's... Yeah, yeah, no. In all the known universe, you don't think that there are any aliens. I think we're the best that we got. That's a sad reality. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> that's so... <laughs> that's, that's really sad. sad. <laughs> the odds are so slim, though, it's, don't you it's think? It's just like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. What about other dimensions? I like the other dimensions thing. I like the whole like, you like, think they're like, like separate realities. Like, versus... like, what, the, like, is it string theory? Isn't that what it is? Where it's like, here's the first dimension, here's the second dimension, here's the third dimension, and it's like, so you get to the fourth dimension. It's time. So I think I think that's how it works. I've heard it's like that the first before. dimension's this, the second dimension's a line, and the third dimension is where you get that z axis. That's not me. We're gonna get copyright claimed. That was incredibly odd. What was that? I have never listened to NF before on this phone. What is NF? And the search played. He's a Christian rapper or something. Oh. But anyways, then it's like the, the fourth... The strangest thing that always <laughs> happened with Chris's rap. I know. I don't know. And, like the, and so what is it? The fourth dimension's like time, and the fifth dimension's like the different things you would have done. And then I, I don't know something that. like that. It eventually gets to like these are the different like choices you would have made. The six is like, oh, these are the different like 
whatever. It's mm-hmm. like slowly overlapping. So yeah. it's like me if I would have just done this or like. Yeah. The thing I've, I've always heard is like a, a two dimensional being can't observe a three dimensional being. Yeah. A three dimensional yeah. being like us, we can't observe a fourth. A fourth dimension. dimension. Yeah. And so if you live like outside of time, that's where the whole like God thing comes. Where it's like that's why he could be here and there and everywhere, like because he is not of this dimension. But we can like we can. He can come here because he can be three dimensional, but no. we can never perceive him on like that other level. Fourth dimension, yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. I just think there's something out there. There's aliens out there with everything the Pentagon released recently, and and that guy that we talked about oh, yeah. in episode four, I think it was. Yeah. I don't know. There's just too much. Yeah. There's too much there that I don't that, that I can't. I, I don't think it's coincidence. Yeah. See, it's weird. Like when I was, I remember thinking I saw a UFO once, but like I've written that off. I've which definitely is, never seen any. Which UFO. it's all, and it's like. Yeah, I don't. I, just I think, think there's just there's too much fucking space. <laughs> there's too much yeah, out there. There's just too much. Yeah, yeah. I'm very. I'm I, and I'll admit I'm in the the minority here. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> like everyone I'll, I know is I was like, you don't believe it, I'm like. Mm, well, the thing, the, the thing is too is like, you know, n- nature is chaotic, right? So like, y- the the think about all the things that had to be just right that happened at random. For humanity to be here as it is, and life in general to be here as it is, not even humanity thinking like, you know, the other mammals and um, everything uh, exists along the line of explosion and recreation. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. And it's like so you take what Venus is only twenty eight million miles away. No, it was not super far away, and it's literally a like a a. a physical hell i mean it's like <laughs> yeah. it rains molten lead the af- atmosphere is made out of sulfur dioxide or whatever no. it is and it's just like the things that have to be just right for life to be the way it is here but it could also be that life doesn't have to exist life, in the same yeah it doesn't have to exist the way it exists here yeah. life can be like some it, life can be exist on venus in the form of some other type of life yeah something that's not necessarily carbon based no. yeah like, exactly it's like, like that could be yeah there something. could be something <laughs> there could be life that exists on jupiter or yeah. uranus i mean i don't think uranus it would I don't, some, <laughs> yeah. I don't think it would be sentient life like sentient no, yeah. life forms like us but you know uh, i think like you know bacteria and there, or, there is that. i mean they found bacteria on mars so at that point it was like well yeah like well the, we accidentally took it there sons of bitches <laughs> sons of bitches <laughs> they I actually read i read something about that uh, recently that NASA tries to be really careful and sterilize the hell yeah. out of everything yeah, so can. that we don't yeah, accidentally. Yeah. yeah, but they like they had like some rock sample, like this one little spot that they kept observing, no. and we had accidentally released some kind of bacteria onto Mars. So I mean, is that going to no, have any no. kind of lasting effect? Probably not. But probably not because uh, there's no other life form that's there. There's, yeah. there's bacteria has to have some type of life form to they just die off to draw off yeah. of, right? But I mean, consider you have extremophiles here on Earth <clears throat> that live like next to those sulfur vents in like the bottom of the Marianas mm-hmm. Trench, yeah. where it's like how many atmospheres of pressure at the bottom? Some unfucking fathomable number, yeah. and it's fifteen hundred degrees Fahrenheit. Well, yeah, we know about we know more about space than we do about. The depths of the yeah. oceans yeah. and our on our own planet, we hardly yeah. know anything about that. So it's not entirely unreasonable to think that there could be something alive on Venus, but you know, considering that the Earth formed the way that it did in our Sun one time out of the whole infinite expanse of the universe, it's not unreasonable to say it might have happened twice. Yeah. No. So I mean, but I don't fucking know. Is <laughs> is the thing? Well, I can't and that's the tell thing you. too. Is we can only observe. <clears throat> Situations like that that are inside of our galaxy. And, well, you're like, not. You're not also not talking about Andromeda yeah, and yeah. all the other ones that are slowly creeping in on each other, and they're eventually going to explode. And <laughs> we can, yeah, we can only observe things. Yeah, like the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxy. Yeah, everybody, yeah. the Milky Way and Andromeda I'll be, galaxy I'll be, are supposed I'll be to long collide. Gone by the time that happens, <laughs> was it like twenty billion years or something even longer than yeah. that? The uh, Milky Way and Andromeda are supposed to collide with each other. No. So when they collide, like, like is it going to be one of the things where it's like supposed to be like. Skaboom! Oh, no, so no, like no, just, no. Very over we're all going long, so just sort of like I think it's just meet, over like in a lo- over in the a middle. long time. It Being, wouldn't be an event that you could observe. Yeah, no. but it was like, um, what was I talking about? Oh, okay, yeah. So like we the way we observe things in space is through uh, reflected light. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. like, so consider that light you know comes from a source, a sun, a star, whatever hits whatever the planetary body is, and then we observe it. We can only observe it's twenty million light years away. We can only observe that thing as it was twenty million years ago, because that's how long it took the light to reach us. Yeah. 
Yeah, most of the time when you're looking at stars in the sky, they're they're long gone. Yeah. That's the thing they're is, not there anymore. Like if someone's yeah. observing us, and that's what, like oh, yeah, like if they're observing us through means of the same way, they're not even seeing people. Yeah, they're, they're seeing all, whatever yeah. the they're Earth seeing, was twenty million years ago. Yeah, and so like yeah. there's they're probably no seeing there. dinosaurs and yeah. everything else. But if they were smarter than us, they would be able to figure something out. They could like erase that whole. Well, that's the thing too is like we only understand. We only understand science as it pertains to the elements that we understand. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there's more than the elements that are currently on the Oh, absolutely. The table. Yeah, on the table yeah. right now. Well, they managed to, you know, so we had said before, Bob Lazar was talking about element, whatever it was. I don't remember the number. Like but Unobtainium. Yeah, unobtainium. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was called. It was called oh, unobtainium, really? yeah. I thought that was and a thing from uh, From Avatar. Avatar yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but they managed to create. An obtainium in a lab and, using the hydron collider or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the hydron collider. They it only it, existed you know, for like a, a half a second, yeah. not even like yeah. a hardly recordable instance yeah. of time. Yeah. But the fact that it did exist for a second was yeah. it was impressive. They're like, oh fuck, <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> like, yeah, maybe like, old Bobby Boy is onto something. Yeah. yeah. Well, and another thing too is like if it if it if it was a if it wasn't a secret, it we would all know about it. Yeah. No. Right. I mean, they cl- they declassified all those UFO sightings and stuff like that um but they didn't outright say this oh, alien they, yeah they didn't yeah. outright say it's an alien yeah. they just said yes we have observed unidentified flying objects yeah. they actually don't call them ufos anymore they call them something else uh unid- unidentified aerial phenomenon uaps oh. is that right yeah i think so yeah so i mean that's just like some broad generalization that could apply to anything yeah i think they're the main concern is i don't think they're concerned that it's an alien ship. I think their concern is that it's a highly advanced uh, aerospace vehicle that maybe China or Russia has, yeah. which would be cause for alarm. Yeah, yeah. You know, if they had something they could bend space time, and the best we got is a you know rocket go fast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> so, I think that's where I think that's the the, the you know CIA's or Pentagon's whatever main concern. Yeah, they're not really worried about you know the gray aliens coming down and sticking their fingers in people's buttholes. <laughs> Yeah, why is it that I, they're always trying I, to get in your butt? I welcome, I <laughs> welcome you, the advance. What do you think? <laughs> if you, well, here's the thing. If humans could freely travel to different planets, some about one of us would go stick a finger in well, a butt. Sure. It would absolutely <laughs> happen. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think over and over again. <laughs> like, I, don't I, don't know. So I don't know. Maybe you get like that one dude that's like kind of a pervert. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> He's like, I ain't been to this planet before. <laughs> like, Imagine the one that landed and saw a cow. was like, this thing has four fucking titties. <laughs> you gotta see it, this bro. This is wild. It's like, yeah. the, the people's butts are so nice, and go back twice. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a grass, and he's got four tits. It's wild. You never believe it. He's like, you can nourishment from it. <laughs> hey, look, this place is fucking insane. <laughs> wild, bro. Yeah, but like, the only way we could ever, you know, go somewhere as it exists now is through, you know, warping, no. bending space time. And there's, we're not even close to understanding how you could ever do that. Yeah. I could imagine what kind of power that would take to fold the fabric of reality. Yeah. I mean, because essentially the way that I've understood it is like if you want to get from one point to another, it's essentially you take it and you bend it down like this. Yeah. And you like fold it in. On you itself. bring those points closer. You to each other. You bring those points closer together, and then you jump across and then expand it back out. Yeah. And you know they. Do you remember a couple of years back where they they observed the gravitational waves? Mm-hmm. Um. It was really interesting how they did that. They had two lasers that were perfect. They were perfectly perpendicular to one another, which was like, in in and of itself, is a, a huge feat considering yeah. how yeah. how many things are imperfect. But they managed to get these lasers like perfectly perpendicular, like completely ninety degree angles, and they set it up to observe for gravitational waves, which is a ripple through space time, mm-hmm. which is caused by like huge amounts of mass colliding with one another, and the one that they observed. I mean, whatever reading they got was so minuscule, but it was there and it was quantifiable. And it meant that – it meant it basically meant that the fabric of space-time is a physical medium. Yeah. It, it, it basically proved that. And what they detected was two black holes crashing into each other however many billions, trillions of years ago. Yeah. And it was like – and they detected it within like the first hour of turning this machine on. Yeah. So it was like – you know, if you consider like a wavelength – and you have the distance between the, the two crests. You know, uh, I think a radio or a microwave is like an inch or something like that. It's pretty yeah, large. Like that, yeah. um, but a gravitational wave is, you know, what, billions of miles? Yeah. And so f- 
however many years ago that that happened, and those ripples started out from the epicenter of those two black holes crashing into each other and traveling however many millions, billions of miles or however many million, billions of years, no. and we just happened to catch it the moment we turned our machine on. Like, the odds of that were so so astronomical. What is it like, uh, like if it's an infinite universe... Uh, at any given time, isn't there? Shouldn't there be black holes crashing into each other? And well, that's the thing. Like, like, I don't, I don't like think we understand and... how often it happens. Right? Yeah. And it's like if, if it's an infinite universe, you'll... At every given time, this is happening an yeah. infinite amount of times. Like it's, you you know, also it's... have to consider it's like a three-dimensional space. So it's like it's like a basically consider like another sphere that comes out of a sphere. Yeah. Rather than a ring that comes off of a circle. Yeah. So it's happening all around us, up, down, left, right, no. whatever direction. And that's the thing is, like, is it is it infinite? Like, like that's that's one of the I'd seen that on one of those old space yeah. shows. And it was like you shoot an arrow and it hits a wall. We get on top of that wall and shoot the arrow and it hits a wall and you get on no. top of that wall. And it was like, when do you? No. What what wall can you meet that you can't get on? And then what's no. on the other side of the wall? Like, no. that's the thing that we we had talked about that before. Is like our understanding of reality is everything has a beginning and an end. Yeah, that everything's finite. Like there's a set amount of everything, so it's hard to, to consider the universe as being infinite. Well, but it's may- even in the way that we that stories are written. There's a beginning and there's an end to well, a yeah. story. You everything know I mean? we know is that's, well, you that's live how, and you die. That's and, how humans. Yeah. That's how we exist. You eat you know and you I mean? poop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can gang, bro. Well, real quick before <laughs> I I got to get out of here, but uh, have you ever heard of spaghettification? Yeah, that shit's wild. Yeah. So apparently there's a theory that if you get sucked into a black hole that essentially it tears your molecules apart uh. but you but you don't die you experience the whole thing for an eternity <laughs> Huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can just basically go into a paper shredder for for ever? all of, for all of ever. Yeah. Why is that? Just like forever because, because of like it's pulling time. It's like yes. how the gravitational yeah. pull. Like the closer you get to the epicenter, the slower time goes. Yeah. And so it's like this parabolic or like a uh, hyperbolic whatever. So what's the theory? Is like you outside would know I'm dead, but me inside. And time like, has slowed. The, the closer I get, time the more time slows and slows, and so, so I can't yeah. Yeah. die. Because every time yeah. I get closer, yeah, you're talking about a second becomes a fraction, uh, fractional, so far down yeah. that you can't quantify. It it. Seconds it becomes can't stop because it yeah. keeps on. As we would, as we outside watching would observe, a second pass by for you could be ten billion years, and then the next second that goes by for us has now turned into 500 trillion years for you. And it's just exponential like that. So time time is moving at a normal rate for us, but the closer you get to the middle of that black hole, whatever it is, it goes, it just, slower, and it goes slower, slower and slower and slower, and slower, and slower yeah. yeah. And that's the actual term for it. It's called spaghettification. Spaghettification, yeah. yeah. But thankfully, as far as I know, nobody's had the experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, as far as we know. Yeah. There might be some guy right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, <laughs> in, in space, no one can hear you scream. No one can hear you turn into spaghetti. <laughs> All right. Well, I got a split. I got. I got a, a daughter that is waking up from her nap right now. So. Well, uh, thank you very much, Chris, for coming Hi. on the podcast thank you. today. Thank it was you nice having, having you. you. Uh, it was good that you could join us on our tenth episode. Um, we uh, we um, will try to get episode eleven out. Um, as soon as possible, we have schedules and things and things life that and, happen. You know how it is. Yeah. But uh, we're yeah. doing our best. We're doing our best. Be on the lookout for that announcement on the Facebook page about the T-shirt giveaway. Yes, uh, I, that will yeah, be coming soon. I, I need to do a better job of being involved with the couple of people that actually listen to our podcast. <laughs> well, follow us on Facebook. Well, me too. Yeah. Shout out to those people. Yeah, shout out to those people. Uh, I want to get a shout out to Zachary Kilgore and Stephen hey. Stout and. I miss um, Zach. Jordan Lee Hover yep. and everybody else who's been listening and following. Absolutely. We really do appreciate it. So thanks again, everybody, and goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.